PowerShell drives and providers. Hi, I'm Don Jones, and the idea of PS providers and PS drives are one of the core things in PowerShell. Providers can adapt some form of storage to look like a disk drive, but they can also have some other uses, and that's really where things get interesting. A PS provider is kind of an adapter. It makes some form of storage look like a disk drive. So you can see I've got several here, and different providers do have slightly different capabilities. For example, as shown here in this table, the file system provider is the only one I currently have loaded that supports filtering. Many of them support should process, and both the file system and the WS man provider support the use of alternate credentials when you're creating a new drive. Providers are used to create drives. So a drive is some form of storage adapted to look like a disk drive. I mean, that's straightforward enough when you're on your C drive, but that means I can say CDHKCU, and now I'm in the registry, but the commands are just like I was in my C drive still. I can run dir, cd software, ls to get a directory listing, del star dash recurs, oh, wait a minute, that might be a bad idea, let's not do that. So you can also create new drives, and new providers can be loaded into the shell along with modules. Uh, for example, let's run get module list available. I should have a lot of modules. Yeah, I've got several, and, and there's a couple of good ones here. Let's import module, active directory, and web administration. There they go. So now if I look at my list of PS drives, you'll notice I have second one on the list, a new AD drive, CDAD. Now, this isn't intended to let you manage Active Directory like a disk drive. I mean, nobody wants to say Dell company, that's my domain name, dash recurs. Nobody wants to do that. In fact, it doesn't even work exactly like a disk drive. You can see here that even though company does exist in the list, it doesn't work exactly like a directory. Now, what this is intended for is so that when you run new PS drive from this location, and I'll show you what that command looks like, you can create a new drive mapped to a different Active Directory domain, and you can provide an alternate credential. So if we go back and look at the list of providers, you'll see that the Active Directory drive or Active Directory provider does support the use of alternate credentials. So the trick is, whenever you're focused on an AD drive, whenever you're in a drive, like I am right now, any Active Directory commands you run will use the credentials of that drive, which is pretty darn cool. It means you don't have to specify a, a separate credential for each command. You simply create the drive. That creates an authenticated connection to the other domain, and then run the commands in that drive, and they'll inherit it. Other PS providers work differently. Uh, for example, Go to the IIS drive. This is letting me manage my local IIS app pool sites and so forth. So if we can CD sites, this one we actually can treat more like a, a directory. Actually, it works a lot like the registry. CD default website. I can see all of its settings and I can change all of its settings and I can also see all of its files, the files that exist in this website. If we go back up to the app pools, I can see my different app pools. Let's go to default. I can see all of its worker processes and all of their settings and so forth. So this is kind of a, a different way of managing things. Lots of different technologies are adopting this provider-based approach, and it's primarily technologies like IIS and SQL Server 2012 is another example that are dynamic. You see, although there are a bunch of commands for managing IIS, Microsoft can't predict what add-ins to IIS you'll have. And because the file system model is designed to not know in advance, I mean, you just sort of explore the hierarchy as you go, it makes a great way of representing those dynamic extensions to the technology. They definitely take a little bit of getting used to. So there's a really key set of commands you're going to want to learn to play with, and that's the ones that use item as part of their noun. Oops, I meant noun, not name. There we go. All of these are designed to work with providers and drives. So get child item, for example, is really just a, a directory command. You've got clear item, clear item property, copy items, move item, get item. 
So you've got items and item properties. Uh, an item is an object, like a file, and an item property might be an attribute of that file, like whether or not it's read-only, or in the case of a registry, it might be the value of a registry setting. Again, it takes just a little bit of getting used to, but it does provide a, a whole different kind of world for managing these things. One last tip. You can almost always ask for help just on the provider name itself if you know it, and that will usually lead you to some great examples of how to use that provider in a variety of different circumstances. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.